Hey, this is going to be a video about getting SVG icons to work well with Rails. Um, historically, there are solutions out there to do that. One that I use religiously is called Inline SVG. And most of the time when I use icons in a Rails app, it's obviously in the view layer, but sometimes you need it in the helper layer so you can wrap it up and, and serve it a certain way to a view. Inline SVG helps with that but it also just helps complexity of an SVG icon, the code behind it, not pollute your views in particular. And it's always just like a, a quality of life thing when you can extract that elsewhere, especially in Rails. That's kind of a big convention of this video is to kind of walk you through how I approach icons and how in my new, new project Rails UI, I've added a little wrapper around S inline SVG. And it's just kind of my take. So it's not like something I, I think would be like useful to put in another gem or anything like that, but it is just something I like to take and run with. So let me show you just, I'm going to create a new app and we can show you what I mean. But the idea of inline SVG, if you're not familiar, is a gem that essentially just renders SVG icons inline. So when you add it to your views, it's like a small helper that you pass like a, a relative path to. So whatever icon you're thinking of is maybe in your images directory. And then that gets piped through to your view and it leaves you without the, the nuance of seeing this long SVG code, which is usually just huge. Um, so SVG icons, if you're not familiar, are essentially uh, vector icons. So you're able to render icons that aren't like fonts. They aren't raster images. They aren't images at all. They're just actually code in the end that you can actually manipulate um, and at the introduction of Tailwind CSS into that mix, you can manipulate them to your heart's content, which is great. So it's it's way more flexible. And then the idea of SVGs is that they're scalable. So you can infinitely scale them to any size. Not that you should, but you can. Um, okay, so with our app made, I made one called SVG, SVG icon. So I'll CD into that. And it will be a very plain Jane app, nothing. But I wanted to show you, but by example, if we add um, the gem SVG icons, which I'll do, or inline SVG, excuse me. I'll just add it to the end of the file and we'll install that. And you can use this gem as is, and that's the cool thing. You can totally do that. And it's not going to make like a huge difference to do it my way at all, but it's more of a, a just a preference. So with the gym you get all these options you can pass it so when you do this inline svg tag it's kind of like a view helper tag so if you've ever done like a content tag or a, a text field tag or something like that same principle it just extracts stuff for you and it's more in a ruby flavor so that's great um, but you can pass data attributes classes ids the typical things you pass html elements and then um, sizes which is different uh, title for accessibility, a description, no comment. It kind of removes or adds a comment in the SVG if you want to. I'm not really sure why we need it, but it's, you know, one of those things. There's a whole list here you could check out. Um, the ARIA ones are great for accessibility too. So don't skimp on those if you are using it. Um, so let's go ahead and install that gem. I'll do bundle install here. With that installed, now we can actually access inline SVG. I'll just do like a rails generate um, scaffold. I'll just do like a static controller just to get a page out there. We'll go to that controller. I believe we should have our routes set up just for that now. Um, we'll just do st static index just to give us a root path. Go back to that controller. We'll add that index action. So simply this. This app's super simple, so don't think it's, it needs to be anything complex here. It's just to make use of these, but just so we can show by example here. So, okay, with that in mind, we need some SVGs. Right now our images folder is empty. I like to use a tool called Nucleo. It's kind of where I house SVGs I find that I like. If I can find it, there it is. It is a, not a native app if you're on a Mac device, but it still works pretty well for me. There's other apps you can use. I think one's called Icon Jar. I typically use Hero Icons. Um, that is a resource from the Tailwind guys. So Hero Icons, they are gonna be 
open source, which is the great thing, but you can also just copy and paste them from the site. I'll actually probably do that just to show you by example. So maybe we'll copy this first one here. So academic cap, make a new file and look what an SVG looks like just so we can get a real idea. So academic cap SVG. And that's what you paste in. So it's got this SVG attribute or tag, I should say. And it's all kind of XML based. So if you've gone back in the H HTML world, XML was the precursor to H HTML in many cases, I believe. Um, oh, there's, there's so much history there. I won't open the can of worms, but you got uh, the ability to add classes. And then with this one in particular, it's stroke based. So you're going to see stroke is instead of something you might see elsewhere in some icons, which is fill. So you might pay attention to that. Um, it's, it's usually related to the stroke line cap and this join um, attribute. If you see those, it's probably a good indication that you have a stroke based SVG. Now, when I add an SVG to my app, um, I'll typically remove this stuff that comes with it because I want to add it to the helper in the end, which would uh, allow me to basically change color, sizes, all that stuff with Tailwind in particular. Um, I did fail to mention that when I made this app, I used Tailwind when I started, if it was a dash C flag you can add, and then also ES build in the mix, so you can go ahead and add those. So we have Tailwind out of the gate, if, if you noticed, just with the style sheets here. You can add that in a brand new Rails app today, as long as it's like, I think Rails 6, maybe 7. I'm not 100% sure. But at this point, now we can add essentially the inline SVG tag to the app. So we could say in line SVG tag and then say the academic cap SVG and the cool thing is it knows to look in your images file or folder uh, just relative to what a, a Rails app uses because this is kind of based on using it in a Rails app it's just a helper built to go within it. So that allows us to just pass the name of the file itself as opposed to anything more. And then you can boot up your app and we'll see if it works. So I'll do bin dev. Your app might differ based on what you've installed here. But let me, um, so I'll go and open up localhost 3000, boot that up. We should see SVG icons. You won't see anything on this page because we took those classes out of it. And so it's not gonna really style it. But if you wanted to, you could pass class here. And we could say like width eight, height eight, and then text, I don't know, pink 500. And see what's happening here. We still need a stroke current class. And that essentially says fill the stroke color with these things, assuming you pass a color attribute. So it's kind of confusing. But if you get the gist of it, with related to SVGs, this shouldn't be too challenging. So let me give this some margin or padding, like just offset with Tailwind. So there we go. And the cool thing with SVGs, like I said, you can scale these infinitely. So I can adjust these height attributes and we can add another color if we want, purple. All that could change. The hard thing with SVGs though is like gradients and stuff. You can add those. It's just, honestly, you need to do it basically within the SVG code itself to get those to really function as needed. So that's where that breaks down with related to um, Tailwind. But onto my version of this, I wanted to kind of talk about how I use it and especially like Rails UI because it's more of a, a nicety, I would say. Let me see if I could boot this up alongside yeah okay so over here i have a default uh theme setup it's using the hound theme it's one i've just shipped actually recently i have this guide in under the icons area if you go into your design system folder under icons you'll see all the hero icons listed and you're going to see a solid set and then an outline set and that's mostly just so you can preview and, and copy and paste pretty simply you just click on these links it's copied to your um, clipboard and you get the icon name but I have this icon usage guide and it pretty much goes over what I'm talking about today. But essentially when you add images to your app, I have a helper that will assume there are two folders within the directory. Um, it's going to go into images and it's going to look for outline or oops, I'll do another folder called solid. 
and Hero Icons essentially ships that way, so you can you can download all those. I don't prefer their mini version personally, but that's up to you if you want to use those. So, so just like their name, that's exactly how they're described. Solid is a solid fill, and then Outline is the stroked version. So it's more or less just you know what it comes down to when it comes to your preferences of how they look. And I kind of prefer the outline version more recently. So that leads me to the helper itself. So an icon based helper that I pass the name of the icon through, and then you can set pass a hash of options, just with basic Ruby here. And then I'll, I'm going to save some time and just copy this over, but I'll show you that the one little thing that's kind of a gotcha is just how um, you can pass a class name to this helper. But other than that, you can essentially pass these options as optional things. Otherwise, we'll assign it dynamically. So when you pass in, say, the title, you can assign it to whatever title you want. Or we'll take the name of the, the icon you pass, say it's that academic cap, and underscore it, and then humanize it so it makes it more readable thing for the sake of accessibility. We'll have area attributes to true. We'll have a no comment in the SVG. We don't know, want the comments in there. Um, the default variant in my case is this is invented basically. Um, there's going to be a variant based on the folder structure I talked about. So you'll have an outline or a solid. And then the default, which is my preference personally, you can change this if you want it in your own app and override this and say um, solid. And then we'll actually fetch and assign the class attribute that comes with the inline SVG tag. I can't quite override that, um, but I can push and fetch a classes attribute or an option and fill that accordingly. So confusing probably, but essentially I'm allowing you to go and do what we do with inline SVG tag, but pass in my own version of the helper that automatically finds the, the, the version or the variant of icon you want and then also allows you to pass a custom path if you want to as well. So it's kind of the same thing that inline SVG tag does. It's just like, I don't like writing three words <laughs> as an underscore. I like just icon, you know, it's a little quality of life thing there. So in that case, with that added, I can go and add icon here. And instead of dot SVG, our helper just assumes it's going to be an SVG. So that's the, the cool thing. It'll, it already prepends that here. Um, and let me double check that yeah path and then we'll be able to pass classes instead of class so that's the big determining factor there this is confusing i know i didn't like that i had to add that but i think um trying to override the inline svg gem was kind of like uh, not worth the fight so uh with that booted up it should be able to just kind of render the same thing here assuming all is well okay we still need to do I think I spoke too soon about that .svg. Oh, no. We just don't have the icon in there. So if you added this app into the outline, we can go ahead and render that. And, oh, you know why? And you're all probably screaming at the camera. I don't have the icons directory. So I do a subdirectory under images because a lot of times I'll have like raster images too. And that allows you to get the icon. So. Silly me, but that's essentially it. So you have this folder structure, assuming you add your, your icons to it, you can manipulate them and change them at will. With Tailwind especially, it's super easy because you have these classes at your arsenal. I mean, you could do it with any CSS framework or whatever too, but um, you can also pass like inline styles if you wanted to. The one thing you could do if you wanted to do the solid variant, since we do default to, to uh, uh, outline is say a uh, variant, and then pass a symbol solid and that will look in the solid folder for the same icon so if we go and get um, this one as a solid i'll go do that real quick just to show you by example it's called arrow down circle svg so that will go and fetch that one in this case we don't have to change anything else other than the variant but you do need to consider stroke current will actually need to be fill current in this scenario so being a fill, that makes sense. So then you get the inverse. Small little change. One little thing I like that too is is sometimes you have like a random icon, say in the images directory. I'll go grab one for that. 
I'm not sure when you would, but you never know. Maybe a logo is kind of a, I think a, a use case I've had before. So I'll have like, I'll just call this logo.svg for now. Paste that in just to get it something there. And then um, in this case, I'll pass the same name of the thing, but then I want a custom path because it's not in the icons or um, those other subdirectories. So then you can just pass logo.svg to the actual path to it. And that would give us the um, logo itself. So then if I reboot and refresh that, that works. So up to you how you want to do that. If you were to, you know, take this away, it's not going to render right and you'll get this SVG file not found. So it's kind of a gotcha, but it is one way, one way to make this very um, redeployable in any instance. So hopefully that was helpful. I don't know if it resonates with any of you. It's more of just me being, um, I wanted things to be my way in a, in, a, in a given stance with regards to the name of the icon helper. It's, it was just shorter and then I could change the variance based on the icon library I was using. So it, it may um, work for you or if you find you need to manipulate it, it's pretty simple to do. So you can add more options here or remove them at will. All right, that's it for now. This video is going on long enough. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.